Hi there, I'm Tony Glynn and welcome along to the PGG Rights and Stud Tour. Now this week we're up in Hawke's Bay, we're with David and Vanessa Hildreth of Hildreth Romney Stud and they're based here at Glen Ross Station. Let's go and meet the team. David and Vanessa Hildreth here at Glen Ross Station in Hawke's Bay. Whereabouts is uh, Glen Ross Station, Dave? Glen Ross Station, well it's uh, 45 kilometres west of Hastings on the Napier Taipei Road and we boundary the Kawika State Forest at the back. We range from 1,400 feet up to 2,500 feet at the back of the property so there's uh, quite an incline into the high country Yeah. and uh, that's where we get the expected snowfalls of course every couple of times a year. And uh, a couple of years ago we get, actually got one towards the end of lambing, so that was pretty tough, a good test for the animals, but came through that alright. So uh, it certainly is a very cold uh, winter time here, so we have to plan for that. And how long have you guys been on the station? Oh, we've been here since not 2005, but originally my grandfather farmed next door at Mangawari, and he bought that in 1919. And then uh, that was sold in 1947. And it was pretty tough times, of course, during the war and rabbits and droughts and everything else. And then my father purchased the property at Sheridan in 1952, yeah. where the stud was founded. It's Sheridan just down the road from here? That's right, it's uh, 10 kilometres down the road towards Hastings. Yeah. And that was a very summer dry property. And of course they had started a stud down there because it was a great testing ground for his animals. And uh, no one had really started a stud in Hawke's Bay on the summer dry hill country. so. He wanted a breed of sheep that was suited to that environment. He was a Romney man too? Uh, very much so, and of course the, the Romneys at the start were totally different to what they are today. Yeah. They're more like a uh, south down, wolf-headed south down I guess. And uh, But now today they're very open-faced, free-moving, easy care Romney. So you've worked your way up through a few properties Dave, you're fairly happy here? I think we're pretty settled here now, I'm very pleased. There's a lot of deferred maintenance here of course, yeah. but uh, now we've uh, Got on top of all that and uh, it's taken a bit longer than we probably anticipated but uh, now we yeah, really got the property exactly how we want it. This place was uh, needed a bit of tender love and care and Vanessa yeah. certainly put her mark on this place. And a couple of sons there too, Vanessa, where are the boys now? Well Angus is um, 21 and yeah. he's finishing a civil engineering degree in Singapore University at the moment yeah. so very proud of him, he's very um, right out there with the the other students and yeah. that's quite hard work and Marcus is 20 and he's still at Lincoln doing a um, well the second diploma isn't yeah. it I think it's called rural management so, he's, did, so he's done the diploma yeah. in, in Dibag and uh, yeah. he's pretty stand now he's gone on and done the farm management as well which really oh, embraces really everything it. he's learnt uh, yeah. in the first year but in general the boys, they're, they're quite, quite keen on the stock the boys Oh, absolutely! They're real farm boys. Um, yeah, they they were right in amongst it when David and I were, uh, you know, first buying and selling properties and, and doing a lot of the work ourselves. Um, I think sort of ten or fifteen years ago, it was you know there was a lot less labour was employed and there were a lot of wives and children doing a lot of good jobs in the yards. Yeah, hmm. you're looking after the place in the big picture. Yeah, well. Vanessa is very keen on the sustainability of our property as well, and it's all about sustainability and profitability. So we've done a, done a lot of fencing off of, of gorges and... Um, Planted um, new trees in the, so that every paddock has um, shelter and shade for stock. Yeah. That was one of the mm. prerequisites. And just starting to um, fence off some of the uh, beautiful stands of bush that are still... It, we think are worth keeping, so we're just doing a little bit of fencing there. And Spending that last few days with you, I can see that you just love the technology. Yeah, we do. Yeah, But technology's got to work. You can't just buy the next gadget just thinking because yeah. they've got the next gadget. But we've been e EID on the sheep for eight years now, and we were probably one of the first um, farmers to get involved with that. And a lot of you know, EID's the, the key word these days in, in sheep and yeah. cattle. But we've fine-tuned it and got the system better. And for us as a stud, it's just brilliant, you know, to be able to scan a tag, you know, and animals up the race and just go up, beep, 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 and, and get out the animals that you want and 
or put them through the, the drafter and just scans the tag and takes the weight and drafts them whichever way you want. It's going to be a quick weaning for you guys. Well, you know, when we can do 600 an hour, in the old fashioned way, you get the animal and read the tag and write down the number. I mean, we're lucky to do 150 an hour. Yeah. And this way is far more accurate and quicker. And, and then we download it on our home computer and sort it on whatever we, we like. Yeah. Mm. Mike Thomas, the manager here at Hildrew Romneys. What's the process we're going through today, Mike? Uh, so we're bringing the ewes in for tagging. So just scan that U tag, yep. send it to the indicator. So we can transfer that onto the spreadsheet. And then from there, uh, manually put in the tag number, condition score, yep. um, what she's scanned and what she's brought in. So this U's scanned with two, brought in two lambs. Yep. And then we tag the lambs. So information already on the buttons there. Yep. So we've got a ram lamb and a new lamb. Yep. So you have a flexi tag one side as a backup. And an EID tag. And then a little bit of other scoring too. Making, are you making a few comments here or anything else going into the computer while you've got them here? Yep, no, we look at everything. Um, about the U, her feet, teeth, udder, condition score of her and her lambs. Yep. And um, it's a good time to look at them. You see what each individual sheep is bringing in. Yeah. And if they're performing. How many are you doing a day? Uh, 300 lambs is a good day. Yeah. So it's a pretty slow process, but we've got to make sure we do it right. Yeah. You bring the ewes and lambs into the covered yards and mother them up. What's the, what's the whole process there? Uh, so the ewes and lambs come down from their paddock into a holding paddock. They're split from there into cuts as they come through the yards. We end up in this pen with one ewe and her set of lambs, uh, which at this stage they're tagged and let back out once we've got a paddock mob done. Uh, from then they run back through, drafted off, lambs are uh, docked and sprayed, ewes come back through the electric dip and they're all done and back off they go to their paddock and we start the next mob. Piece of cake. It is. Very so time consuming. Very time consuming, but it's a good job worthwhile and it's a lot easier than doing it at birth. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah. You're finding that a lot more accurate there with the, with the new gear? Yeah, it's a great piece of invention this one. So got no cords and pretty straightforward. Uh, working well. Yeah. So what sort of information are you putting in there about the lambs at this stage of their life? Um, general condition. Yeah. Um, which is a good indication of the ewe as well. Um, any faults that we can find, pink noses, black spots, anything at all, they're, they're taken out of the studs straight away. Yeah. Um, so we've, we're done with them now. And, uh, just an you know, overall look at what's coming through the, through the flock. Yeah. And then weaning? Uh, weaning time. So from this information here, we've got with a, a ram, a ewe lamb, or they're going to be culled. Um, so at weaning time, we've drafted all the lambs into a mob. They come back through the Prattleys, that automatically drafts some ram lambs, ewe lambs, culls, and records their weaning weight. Yeah. From then. Well, we've always focused on the key four, the fertility and the weaning weights, and uh, also the, and the fleece weight and the autumn autumn weights and also the split weaning weight into two so the mother actually gets a bit of credit for weaning weight as well now. Yeah. But what thing is the more progress you want to make um, and overall the, the less traits you really need to focus on. If you focus on too many traits so of course you're spreading yourself too thinly and you won't make go ahead progress and make enough. progress mm. as quickly as, as, as yeah. you'd hope as, as I said. So, um, but now it's, it's, and it's all about structural soundness. I mean, we thoroughly check every ram and every ewe. We, we put them through the hectic handler or drag them across the board, check all their feet, their teeth, the wool, and everything about them. So uh, we're only keeping the best animals. Yeah. I just see our, our growth areas and traits as really in more growth rate to weaning. Yeah. Uh, more, better efficient ewe, so a ewe is going to wean a couple of good lambs. Um, and now we're going to focus more on the dressing out percentage and, and the meat yield from, from the particular carcass. Now we really want to get the best out of our genetics, so the best way to do that is you've got to feed them. And uh, with the Farmax program and John, we've learnt uh, to feed our animals a lot better right throughout the year, and especially leading up to lambing and after lambing. And it's probably one of the key areas that we've found that we've really benefited. And uh, I could say a lot of farmers in New Zealand really need, need to take that on board yeah. of the feeding. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's all about good genetics and good feeding. How are you involved here, John? 
Um, I'm involved here as a consultant helping um, the, the Hildreths run their Farmax program. Um, I've been doing that for a number of years. Now Farmax, can you just sort of explain that in a nutshell? Uh, Farmax is basically a feed budgeting program that models out a biological system really. It just puts the, a virtual copy of the farm onto your computer around animal live weight um, performance and pasture growth rates. So I use it on a wide variety of farms. Sheep and beef farms is my business, so they're using sheep and beef farms, but yeah. So how are you finding it benefiting here at Hildreth, John? Well, I guess it's it's um, it's allowed us to uh, refine a few things over the years and make sure that we're um, uh, getting the most out of our sheep. Um, around making sure that we get animals to target live weights at certain times of the year and achieve the desired pasture covers that we require to make the system work. Yep. Um, and that's that's certainly been seen in some of the performance um, over the last three, three or four years. It seems to be just continually climbing and climbing and climbing. Um, the sheep flock is basically run in a very commercial environment, very similar to surrounding farms. I mean, to give you an indication of maybe how the how commercially run the flock is. Um, the sheep flock, the stud sheep flock eats 83% uh, of the overall feed demand, which is very comparable to farms in the district on their typical sheep stocking um, rates. One of the things that um, David's been uh, quite focused on is over the last two or three years is, is new nutrition yep. um, and ensuring that we can carry enough cover into the winter to, to feed our ewes adequately and the utilisation of winter crops has become part and parcel of that system to make sure that we can get um, that nutrition right. It's a very um, cold environment up here in the winter, we get snow, um, pasture growth rates are, are pretty minimal and been able to put the ewes onto crops in order to um, ensure we can uh, hold ewe condition. It's very difficult for us to grow grass early in the spring um, but if we can get that U condition right, we can overcome some of that feed deficit that exists in the early part of the season by mining condition off the used bark um, in the early part of lactation. Hamish Speedy here at Mungahani Station. Whereabouts is Mungahani, Hamish? Uh, it's about 45 k from Taipei, east of Tai Happy, right under the ranges. Yeah, fairly big place. Yeah, it's 12,000 acres, uh, about 10,000 effective. Yep. Yeah. What are you running here, Hamish? Uh, 23,000 ewes. And getting some of those lambs straight on the truck? Uh, we do out of some of the earlier ewes, but uh, because of our altitude, we uh, lamb some of them fairly late. We don't start lambing until after Labour weekend, or last week of October, yep. on the top country. So. And now some of your Romney rams you're sourcing from the Hildreths? Yes, we get some from uh, David, yep. about 50-50 uh, I suppose. Yep. Yeah. How do you like those, uh, the Hildreths Romneys? They're good sheep. Yeah. They're very good sheep. They're tough, uh, plenty of meat. We've done the size, you know, big lengthy sheep years ago, and now we're just concentrating on medium sized sheep with plenty of meat in them. Yeah. But no, they're good rams. So, a lot of information out there now from the breeders. Are you still looking phenotypically quite hard at the rams before you buy? Yeah, well, it's about a 50 50. Yeah. Look at the books and look at the, at the product. It's got to be a, a good ram that uh, has got what we want. And what are you really wanting in a ram here? Constitution, yeah. soundness and feet, uh, reasonably clear head, and plenty of meat. You scanning here, Hamish? Yes. Yeah. How's that going? Uh, normally around 170, you know, sort of 165 to 175 bracket. Yeah. Depends a bit on the season too. On well, that fertility, do you think you've got it mastered? Well. Now, John Cannon will tell us that uh, with his experience and, and looking at different scanning percentages, he believes 180% scanning is, is where you want to be, and then we consistently do that. And a lot of our clients are consistently getting up around that figure, and then you're uh, lambing around that between 140 and 150, depending on the weather. The scanning higher than that is also not, you know, it's not good for wastage, is it? I mean, if you get too high and you're lambing at 150 in the gap, is too large. It's yeah, but of course you get over 180% scanning and you're, you're getting into more triplets, which yeah. used to be the the buzzword to, to have more lambs, but we find it's alright to have a few triplets, but we just put them out for the twins, so if they come in, they come in. 
I mean, we've been selling to a lot of very tough stations in Ratahi, Wanganui, Taiapi, Wairau, and, and they keep coming back, so obviously working for them. And, and a lot of places, I mean, a typical example of what a place is achieving, I mean, they might have started at 110% lambing, and now they're up at 140% lambing. They used to take two to three days to get them mustered to the wool shed, now they're with three or four shepherds. Now they're doing it probably not even in a day with one, one shepherd. Yep. And they're very free-moving sheep and open-faced and, and, and mobile type of animal. And the other good part about them is being dual purpose, that they still haven't sort of lost that wool. Yes. Um, you know, it has to be taken off and you still got very good fleece weights and, and aware well, of the fact that it's um, a beautiful fibre, um, underpaid for and perhaps underutilised, but hopefully there's a future for it. And you guys keep a fairly close eye still on that wool, even though Absolutely. it's worth nothing? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, well, it's, but you like to be paid for quality again, too. And, and we, the fleece weight thing, if you just focus on that solely, will just take you into a Lincoln type fleece. So we've but really Amazing. gone on quality you now it has to have the good crimp and the good style and we'll certainly take out anything that's too low on the fleece weight because we still weigh all the fleeces of all the ram ram hoggets and everything else so it is again it's quality and we try to get a good smooth even tight fleece Gary Mead manager here at Otupai Station now where's Otupai Station Gary? Uh, Otupai Station is on, on the Taipi Napier Road we're um, 65 k's from Taipi and uh, 100 from Napier yeah, now you've been here for a few years, haven't you? Yeah, actually, yeah, quite a few years, really. Um, been uh, managing uh, for 30 years. Yeah, pretty much getting to know the country, Tony. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you've had some top shepherds here over the years? Uh, we had a, we've had quite a few um, good shepherds through the years. I've enjoyed most of them. We had a bit of a an off year in about 1990. Uh, we had a couple of rough fellas uh, from the South Island um, shepherding at the time. Actually, it was your era, wasn't it, Tony? Yeah, I, I think it, it might have been about then. Yeah, yeah. I think it was, yeah. <laughs> No, that's pretty good stuff uh, all through the years, Tony. Yeah. Now, who owns Otupai? Um, Otupai is owned by the Williams family in Havelock North, and um, my boss now is James Williams, who's uh, one of the family and one of the owners. I saw a fairly good crop on the way in here. Yeah, we've got a good crop up there. We've um, had very good crops this year, and that crop down there is actually a, a 17 tonne uh, direct drilled Swede crop. Yeah. Um, we've had a winter that we've had quite a warm sort of winter so um, we're getting near the end of the season and it's still quite a lot of swede there so we've actually got uh, 6,000 dry hoggets and uh, 750 weaner steers uh, on there uh, plus uh, 280 months heifers um, and it's uh, 35 hectares so there's a bit of eating power there Tony but yeah. uh, as you can see there's still a bit left yet. Yeah how is the numbers going on the sheep side of things? Uh, good we've um, got 22,000 ewes and um, 2,000 cows. Uh, all our cattle are sold uh, up to 15 months of age. We don't do a second winter. And with the lambs, we, we try and fatten most of them, but if the store market's better, we, they go store. So when I was here, it was all Romneys with a wee bit of corridor through them. What are we doing now on that side of it, Gary? We stopped using the corridor because um, obviously the wool. Yep. Uh, we had a beautiful wool sheep, but you know, wool being where it is now. So we've um, introduced um, a little bit of Perindale into the into our stud flock yeah. and and Romley as well yeah. and so that's, that's the way we're heading now. You're sourcing rams from a few different breeders? Yeah we've gone around, um, we've, we've, we've sourced from three well-known breeders. What I like about the Hildreth rams is um, they're open-faced, uh, they're, they're good sound sheep they've, uh, and they're possibly out of all the Romleys a little bit finer in the wool which kind of suits us as well and obviously constitution's a big part of it and um, feet, feet is my biggest thing. I've, I've just got to have a sheep that's got good feet yeah. and, um, and bone. Yeah. And, um, and, and as I said before, the open head, I really like that open head sheep as well. Yeah. So that's, that's what we're looking for. Paul Bays here with PGG Wrightsons up here in sunny Hawke's Bay. Bay. Where's the sun gone, uh, Paul? Well, it's, thank God it's disappeared for a day or two. We can do with this rain. We're desperate for some rain. So if we can get you know, 20 or 30 mils, we'll be good for another few weeks. So. Uh, a lot of lambs, so it'll be awesome. Yep. Really good. You have some happy clients out there. Very. Oh, you yeah. know, the phone hasn't rung this morning. Everyone's yeah. happy with the rain, so <laughs> yeah. it'll be good. So, Paul, this morning we're up here at Hildreth Romney Stud. Uh, yeah. You have quite an involvement here with the team. Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah. No, no, they're uh, running a very, very good operation up here. David, Vanessa and, and the team, Mike. Um, 
No, very, very good Romney Rams. You go a long way to find better than these good Rams here. They People come from virtually all over the country, down the South Island, a lot of big hill country places, Taipei up Gisborne Way, buying Rams. I've had clients, managers of big places who shift jobs and, and they actually take the Romney Rams with them. When they go to the new jobs, they, they come and take the genetics with them. That speak for themselves, make it a little bit easier for, for you. Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, most people come here and, and they book in for 10 or 12 Rams, or for an example, and they might take 15. They end up putting 15 out, I will take all those things. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's very good. The clients have been coming here for years and years, you know, generations. Their, their grandparents are coming here as well, so, and they just stick with them. I mean, they're, they're bloody good Rams. They're, they're good meaty, fertile, good wool. Yeah. Just a, a very, very good all-round Romney Ram. You look at what the New Zealand average lambing percentages and the average weaning weights, you know, there's still a lot of market out there for the average farmer in New Zealand to lift their production. Yeah. And uh, a lot of our clients are achieving that 140% lambing and, and good weaning weights and good fleece weights and good quality wool. Fortunately, we had clients entering the uh, u Hogger competition mm -hmm. in New Zealand, so it's a nationwide thing. So you have the regional competition plus the national and we've had four winners in the last 10 years of the Romney section. In, in Hawke's Bay? And overall New Zealand. New Zealand. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. So uh, we've actually had one overall winner as well, and two that have come very, very close to winning the overall award. So to us, it's it's based on the performance of the u Hoggets plus the presentation and the and the look, of course. Yeah, yeah no, that's, it's, a, it's a very prestigious award, and, and yeah. it's certainly growing in popularity. We started with a sheep plan, animal plan, and now so it's been the same. You're trying to put a dollar value on every trait, and then when on the end overall index, you've got a dollar value. I mean, if it's a thousand on the index, it's basically telling you that every progeny be ten dollars more, make you ten dollars more than the average yeah. lamb. So in the long run, you're trying to make more money for your clients. So when they come here, they're buying a lamb based on the index, so they can basically say that. This is the effect it's going to have on my business on if my I use flock. these rams. Mm. Providing that they've got their ewes up to scratch. Yeah, but it's, that's right. I mean, we're a maternal flock. Mm. So basically that means that they've got to use our rams to build a maternal flock. Yeah. Which does take the time to do that. It's still growing. Mm. And um, we did get to a stage we probably grew too quickly. And then we got to a, a, a size that uh, we probably had to pull back from and just get our quality back and because it's all very well to grow your business but you're good at quality is number one. When you get to a certain number of rams you know at what stage do you start taking your eyes off the price sort of thing? It's very important with scale to maintain the values and the quality that you've always had Yeah. and we've tried to we've been more focused on that than ever. They're going all over New Zealand now the Wairau, Gisborne and Taiapi and Whanganui and, and uh, Tapanui I heard. Tapanui, yeah, actually yeah, down yeah. south we are, yeah. and we've got a good crew of very good farmers are coming up from that area now, yeah. and, they, uh, and we pride ourselves on the rams that we put in front of them, and if they want 10 rams, well, there's always 40 odd rams in there, and there's, they all have to be good rams. Yeah. And if anything, I always remember your father saying that um, if you didn't want to use the last ram that went out the gate, you, it shouldn't be for sale, if you wouldn't use it yourself. Oh yeah? Mm. So you're obviously going down the right track, where to from we here? We think so. Oh, more of the same. And, yeah. um, you know, if, what, as David says, is compounding genetics. It's just like interest. In your flock, well, you've always got top ewes yeah. and average ewes and bottom ewes. You can cull the bottom and target the average to the top. Yeah. So while we always have that to us, we There's can keep making to progress. Do. For more information on the PGG Rights and Stud Tour, visit ruraltv.co.nz and come and join us on Facebook.